So hello and welcome to April 2023's art vlog. Um, I feel like I say this every single month, but um, what the hell happened? I know what happened, but um, <laughs> let's not get into that just yet. Art-wise, this was a fantastic month. I did a lot of ink work, sketches, doodles, and um, I was thinking a lot about graphic design this month. Um, so I was working a lot with more graphic elements as sort of a method for simplifying backgrounds and environments. But um, personal life-wise, um, not that great. So I'm actually going to start off with, uh, normally I'd like to start off with like real-time footage. I don't know if I'll do that since I am recording the voiceover before I edit. So now I'm going to dip into showing the actual artwork that I did this month. Um, because I was on time posting last month, I actually got to make art during the first week of April. First up there was done with alcohol markers, just kind of playing around with the couple that I have. I've been trying to finish off the last couple pages of this mixed media paper that I've got since I don't really, I've realized I don't really like having all these like loose papers everywhere. Um, next up here was a bunch of like ink doodles. I've been really vibing with this ink pen I grabbed in Victoria yes, last year. Um, it's the Pentel Tradio something. Um, pretty impulsively, I just started doodling on these like bookmark card things and then I went back and did more work on this mixed media sketchbook and even like it's only been a few weeks since I did these but it's interesting to look back on these um, doodles right now because I really like I was thinking like I didn't start doing them until later in the month but it's clearly not the case since I did these on like April 4th. Anyways I was enjoying doing those ink doodles so much that I actually went and I bought these um, Marvi Uchida pens in a handful of colors plus this like gray Pentel brush pen. I haven't really played with them too much but I really really like them so far. I've been really been looking for some like fun sketching pens just so that there's something nice about the permanence of a pen. Next up here is this sketch from reference of John Wall from EXID. This was prep work for a painting that I finished towards the end of the month. First goal there was kind of it, the first goal was kind of to finish off the last of my loose arches hot press paper. Um, I also was really interested in doing a painting with like a cream ivory yellow and like a turquoise blue as the main colors since it actually reminds me of this um, digital painting that I did a long time ago. Here is, um, I finished reading Six of Crows in April and I really was interested in the world building and I really liked I thought the characters were interesting because I recently, I not even recently, but I've grown to really enjoy these like morally great characters. So I did this like ink drawing composition on the last page of my Strathmore mixed media paper. I haven't finished it yet, but I'm excited to do so. I've also been trying to finish off this hemp paper. I like it texturally. It's just that I'm really heavy handed when it comes to sketching. So things don't erase that well. And pretty impulsively here, I, I bought this a small wired sketchbook last month because I've been last month as in March because I, I I was missing having a more like creativity oriented sketchbook and the first day that I opened it I literally did like 10 pages so it was absolutely a good idea it feels a little bit more scattered like all my thoughts and drawings are still a little bit more scattered even though I've started taping things into my sketchbook because but I I just think it's I don't know I needed this it, it was nice to be really explorative and I can use up some supplies like I've, that I've been wanting to finish. Is there something nice about being able to make something ugly and then close the sketchbook and not have to look at it again? Um, which is odd to say because I feel like that's what I intended for my like big sketchbook to be but it has ended up not being like that. I also started kind of dipping into like mixed media work on this paper because I've just never really done it for some reason. I've always kept to using pencil or ink in these sketchbooks, even though they are in all, basically all of my sketchbooks that aren't watercolor sketchbooks. Um, but I really want to let myself use these colors, and I think it'll also help because I can just start thinking more about colors and composition and doing little tests on these papers without making... It, without it feeling like such a big deal. This paper doesn't handle the way that watercolor paper does, but it's just like these little bursts of colors and it just makes it more lively and it's just enjoyable, really. 
I can, you know, I can just kind of draw weird shit and not have to think about it too much. That's really what the sketchbook is right now for me. I've actually been wanting to revamp my portfolio page. By revamp, I mean like start it completely new and make it more of like uh, cr like an all-inclusive creativity, creative like portfolio, if that makes sense. Because right now it's like a graphic design portfolio, so it's only relating to that kind of thing. But um, I feel like there's a lot of crossover for me with a lot of my creative endeavors. Like I like to write, I like to draw. I like to, like, I, I'm really interested in a lot of these methods of visual storytelling that can't be fully encapsulated in simply a graphic design portfolio, so I basically want to make a portfolio for myself that is not, like, industry-friendly per se, but more, like, for me to better align my creative thoughts. <laughs> Next up here is my watercolor sketchbook. I did a study in watercolor and gouache of like a masculine presenting torso and some like flower floral doodles. The next page here was done to try and like loosen up a bit more with flat brushes than some like hiramaki type splotches with ink doodles over it. Next page, um, there's that like little sunset fence that I did in acrylic gouache. Yeah, I've got this little sketchbook that I, at some point in April, I did like a color chart and then the next page that I just showed really briefly there was color testing for the painting of Jungla. It was a really simple idea, but I, I think I should have waited a bit more before I <laughs> taped the taped it down, but I just kind of wanted to, it was just a simple thing that came to mind, and I'm glad that I took a little bit of time to do it and not to think too much about it, because it was more of like a technique study, if that makes sense. Um, next up is uh, the like Hanamule, this is the rough press paper, and then that's the like Windsor Newton 25% cotton paper. I just did some like doodles and whatnot in that. Um, also in the Hanamule one, I <laughs> forgot to show one of the one of the sketches that I did early in the month, like it was gouache and ink, just a bunch of like random things, but um, I actually have the footage from painting that, so I might show that here. Last up in this like miscellaneous section is um, painting of Ezra. I added some more blue and I did some de the detailing on the shirt, but not much more than that. I actually think I've gotten past most of the stressful parts of the painting, and now it's just like the t parts that are more enjoyable but also more time consuming. Ooh, last here is uh, an update on where I'm at in, tr in trying to finish the uh, opus paints that I've got. It's going pretty well. Yeah, that's kind of all the like miscellaneous art and whatnot that I did this month. And now we move on to the big boy sketchbook, which was pretty standout this month. I filled about 130 pages, I believe, mostly because I decided to start taping in my loose paper sketches. And I'm, I'm glad that I did that because it does feel a little bit less chaotic, especially as I'm continuing to try to use a lot of my like random papers and other supplies. It's nice to 
have everything from this current art phase of my life in one location as a collection. So uh, first up were a bunch of random portraits. I was trying to use up some of my softer, darker, like the 7B, 6B LEDs. Then some hand studies. This doodle here was like a concept sketch because I wanted to do some skull studies in gouache this month, but um, I've noticed that I tend to start off the month with more sketching and then shift into painting more in the latter half of the month, but unfortunately life death actually, uh, had other plans. You know, there, there's a part of me that felt like it just, uh, just a smidge that it'd be kind of inappropriate to paint skulls in the month that my grandmother and a singer who I was deeply fond of passed. Um, the other half of me is like more cold-hearted and logical and says, you know, death is inevitable, you have no qualms about painting skulls before, but suddenly people you like die and now it's inappropriate. That's kind of you know, a little sketchy. I'm not very good at processing things like this, but you know, people kind of exist in entities. I'm allowed to feel uh, both of these emotions and, and sides of the argument at once. And anyways, um, yeah, there's a lot more like hands and doodles and concepts and characters of mine just exploring things and kind of just trying to work through the emotions that I was feeling at the time. And yeah, right here is basically where I decided to start taping those things into my sketchbook. A lot of these doodles that I was doing here were leaning towards like ink and graphic shapes just because I was thinking a lot about graphic design this month. So all some like silhouettes and just, yeah, <laughs> lots of shapes. Yeah, I've noticed in doing a lot of these is that there are, when I'm drawing hair, there's all these ways these little pockets of negative space and that's a pretty interesting observation for me to think about. I don't know. I feel like a lot of the, this work is like almost delving in, into surrealism, like creepy things. Well, I know surrealism isn't like specifically creepy things, but for me it's a little bit of... When I think about surrealism, I think of like dipping into like uncanny valley type thing. This sketch was a study of that one picture of Yeonjin that I've been doing over and over and over again. I was just trying to use up a lot of my darker leads because I don't reach for them that often because I'm like, I am really heavy handed when it comes to sketching anyways. So it doesn't, it feels a little counterproductive for me to grab pencils that are dark when I will not be able to like layer and refine sketches if they don't erase properly. Yeah, okay, here it is. <laughs> uh, from here, from like the 18th, 19th onwards, it was just a lot of late night doodles just trying to capture the feelings I was feeling of loss and family connections. Uh, I wrote down a phrase on one of these doodles and it was roots and branches and this idea of, you know, how we're connected and influenced by the people that we care about, but also how we can, like, extend beyond those natural roots or expectations for ourselves. And I've been, I've been thinking about it a lot, um, how to cope with these feelings of, like, not only the grief of what, of how things happened, or, like, the, the immediate grief, but also the continuous ache, because, you know, even now, I think back to people who I have, whether it's celebrities or relatives that I've had who have passed, and there's always this feeling of, you know, feelings and things left behind, things and stories left unfinished, and also the lasting impact of our own existences. <laughs> Oops, sorry, I keep tapping the filter. So, you know, this is completely off topic, but I've now lost three of my grandparents, uh, one a year since 2021. 20, um, <laughs> I may have just jinxed it, but honestly, I think my other grandmother's gonna live forever. I think she might outlive me, honestly. Um, we went on a walk last time we were in the country, and both she and my grandfather um, outwalked me. I was, I was dead. I can't do long walks. I think a lot about family and connections kind of all the time because I'm a diaspora who I don't really speak in my mother tongue. I've been trying to do it more, but there's just this, just the everything everywhere all at once of it, right? The idea of lives you could have lived and whatnot. People you care about, but you don't know them truly. You know, you love people and they love you, but there's something almost like surface level, superficial about it. That was really off topic again. Um, I did some studies, that picture of, of uh, Courtney Eaton, who plays Lottie in Yellow Jackets. I was just thinking of trying to find things to doodle, and I asked my sister, and she told me to draw Lottie, and it didn't turn out looking like Lottie, but uh, 
I like how it turned out anyways. Oh, <laughs> this year I realized that I accidentally skipped over a, pa a couple pages, so I taped in that drawing of Jungwa that I um, had initially wanted to tape in earlier, but I forgot to leave myself space in the, the sketchbook, so I, I taped it in here <laughs> just to kind of cover up the mistake, and it's, it'll, you know, it is going to bother me for, probably for the rest of my life that it's now not chronological, but that's something that I'm going to have to deal with separately. Um, this one here, yeah, Tree of Life, I think I wrote. Things of I, people, places, faces. It's so interesting to me looking at a lot of these, how the like floral and plant studies I did in February are... For some reason I thought that I would stop drawing them after I stopped thinking about them, but they've kind of grown into my natural sketching routine, which I'm really content with. So I think it was a really, first of all, a really good thing to do because it made me realize that they're not as hard to draw as I think they were, as I thought they were at the time. Uh, there were a couple of doodles of like buildings and environments there. I think what I'd really like to do with ink is um, like in pencil sketch out like just a perspective grid and then in ink just start doodling a like cityscape or like a, an environment or something like that. It's interesting to look back in this because I think that a lot of my stress and anxiety this month was so far removed from art that the art was coming a lot more naturally. I was just kind of feeling and putting lines and not thinking too much and I, it's like almost when I remove that active thinking of it I start delving into things that I wanted to do in the first place but that was this, the big boy sketchbook this month. I have really 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 been trying to finish up a lot of my like art supplies that are on their last legs so I recently like a couple of the color raised pencils that I don't use that much and I want to use up so I can kind of reduce clutter in my in my art desk organization area. I actually like pretty early into the month I um, really impulsively I started reorganizing my desk. Yeah, it was really impulsive. I just wanted to, you know, I got into kind of paint drawing with inks, so I wanted it to better align with my ink habits and my goals, so I organized my inks and pencils more. Previously, I had, like, you know, all my colored pencils in one spot, and it just kind of deterred me from using them because I would have to go and I pick which color I wanted to sketch with, but now I've got this little, <laughs> I put this little jar on my desk of, um, things like pencils specifically that I want to use soon so now they're just right there and if I feel like doodling I don't have to go through that process of making those decisions um, and also like I put that little jar plus some extra papers and stuff in a basket so now I can stop leaving shit on my desk everywhere it just goes in the basket and then you know this is a philosophy that I have in my personal life as well I believe that we need to we as humans try to, who are both, you know, fixated on the idea of organization and collections, but also can be very lazy, I think we need to accommodate for that laziness. You know, I believe in leaving empty roof, room on shelves or empty baskets and for things that you want to deal with later. <laughs> that is my philosophy when it comes to, like, cleaning and organizing my room. So here it is being, showing itself in my artwork. I guess, like, housekeeping notes, I bought a microphone this month. It was pretty impulsive. Um, right in the middle of the month, I like, I was just getting, like, dreading the idea of having to try and record and uh, record again with my phone and, like, transfer it over and just, yeah, it's it's a bit of an investment. Uh, it wasn't exactly cheap, but I did get a second hand with the pop filter, too, so it was a pretty good deal overall, I think. Um, and thinking that next month, so May, which is actually this month for me because today's April, May 2nd. Uh, I've been lying to you the whole time, yes. I'm thinking that this month I'm hoping to start saving up for a tripod, like a proper tripod for my camera, but also at the end of April, or like in the midway point of April. You might be able to tell from how terrible some of this footage looks, but um, I like dropped my, my, okay, I didn't drop it. I knocked it over by accident. I knocked over my camera by accident. Got a little uh, messed up. So I might have to look at buying a new lens if I can't figure out what's up with it, which I know that I won't be able to, but I'm delusional anyways. Anyways, 
um, yeah, new microphone this month, or April, April, and then May, May or June, hopefully a tripod. I do want to do those skull gouache studies eventually. If, like, for no other reason than, like, practicing flat brushes and mark making and using gouache or acrylic gouache more, um, I do want to finish that Six of Crows, like, ink drawing. I'd like to finish up those darker lead pencils that I have. I think they'll be really good tools for, like, simplifying backgrounds into silhouettes. Um, I've been thinking about putting together a travel kit, but, um, I'm a little bit on the fence of it because I'm trying to think about, like, if I had a travel kit, would I actually draw more? Oh, I did do some digital art this month. I did it at the very beginning of April, I believe. I just drew in a couple random background items in that painting of Jamie that I started in January, and that's all I've done since then. I don't think there's anything else to say, so um, thank you for listening to all my rambling. Have a good day. See you in at the end of May. Bye-bye.